Welcome back to another episode of Blatantly Honest with Michaela Nichols. Today I caught up with Harrison Hood. He's a 24-year-old actor, writer, director, comedian, and a music producer. He's also a YouTube creator and musician. Despite his young age, Harrison is doing it all, and he has no plans to slow down. His friends and people who have just met him describe him as honest, genuine, happy, and loving with a unique view on the world. He's just waiting for an angel investor to kick off the next chapter with a big bang. He also wrote this intro for me because he is just that guy. So welcome, Harrison. Harrison, thank you so much for being on with me today. I know we're gonna shoot the breeze and talk about substance. So how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Uh, I just ate some chicken and fries and yum. Um, what else am I up to? Oh, I just had a Caesar, which is the most Canadian drink you can have. Um, a what? It's called a Caesar. It's is very that like a Caesar like- salad. No, it's a drink. It's like a Bloody Mary, but with Clamato instead of tomato juice. (laughs) Sounds great. I mean, I love I love a Bloody Mary, so I'll have to try a a Caesar sometime. (laughs) Yeah, you even said. Why did you say Caesar in an American accent? I just I felt like I had to because like you're like the Caesar is a Canadian drink, so I felt like I had to be like Caesar (laughs) Sally. I'm wearing worst pants for the for a podcast I just realized because they're like windbreaker pants and they sound like this <laughs> well I know I I have like weird pants on too so just uh just don't touch your pants and you'll be fine right I won't move <laughs> definitely move don't feel like you gotta be like stuck there because I I move I fidget I'm a fidgeter mm. so <laughs> so let's I guess let's start at the very beginning uh and so I can get to actually know you I know we have a great mutual friend Miss Sydney Scotia hello Sydney um yeah. if you're... <laughs> yo um yeah it's just it's funny because like our homegirl and uh, we've never met in person but now we kind of are mm-hmm. so we heard thanks, so Sydney. much about each other so you're from Canada mm-hmm. I grew up in um on Vancouver Island which is like a relatively large island right off of Vancouver, uh, Canada. And I grew up in like a pretty small town though, like 5,000 people-ish. Most of them retired. So there's a lot of golf courses and um, cute shops and that's about it. That Um, sounds perfect. Yeah, it was nice. It's like a nice place. I still like uh, it's called Qualcomm Beach. I still love Qualcomm, but like I don't want to live there right now. Like I'm 24, so I think that would uh, not be the most fun and exciting for me, anyway. Yeah, no, I hear you. You gotta I like fly I love small towns and like are super content and happy, like just staying there. But I'm not. No, no, you gotta spread your wings and fly to America or fly to wherever else. <laughs> yeah, like America, let's go. And then they're like pandemic, and I'm like, maybe next year. <laughs> maybe next time. I know. So I'm originally from Buffalo. I don't know if you knew that, but I was gonna go and see like Niagara Falls in the summer. Like now that I'm like a legal adult at 22, I'm like, I can go to Canada and just do things in Canada and whatever and hang out. And um, then the same thing happened. And I guess my one friend didn't realize that if, I guess if you're like married, but you're not married, you still can't get into Canada. So she went all the way up there and then couldn't get in. So. What? Oh, like, yeah. uh, what do you call it? Um, like a common. common yeah, yeah, common but law. But changed that. So now common law can come. Wow. I should probably let her know. Cause she. <laughs> uh, like really recently, like I think, June something what? oh my god yeah, my friend's common law and they just came really uh-huh yeah. that's it I don't know maybe she said something wrong or maybe she actually wasn't because she was there like a few weeks ago but whatever yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. did you just always know that you wanted to get into acting and music and was that <laughs> well there? when I was I have an older sister and when I was like four she started She's four years older than me, so she's like seven or eight when she started piano. And I wanted to do everything that my older sister did. Shouts out Kaylee. Uh, <laughs> and then she, so I started piano because of that. Yeah. Uh, um, and like my parents bought us computers when we were super young. So my sister was like teaching me computer stuff. And so that was just kind of like technology was a part of my life as well. And then 
I was super into baseball until I was 14. Okay. And I only got into acting when I was around 11, 10 or 11. Um, yeah, it was an interesting one because my sister did some acting as well. Before I even like started acting classes and stuff, she did it for like two years and like had a lot of callbacks and stuff. But coming from the island, it was like a lot of time commitment to like yeah. go to the mainland for an audition. It was like, a, you know, a four or five hour thing just to do Whoa. it. And, you know, missing school and stuff. My sister's like way more academic than I am. So she was like, no, this isn't for me. I don't want to audition anymore. I just want to do my like I'm studying work yeah study like she literally loves to study and loves books and I'm like great and uh, I don't mom dad can I try acting and they're like if you do classes for two years yes like we're not going to do the whole audition thing like we did with your sister if you're not serious about it and I was like okay like did some acting classes and that's when I was like yeah I love this like I was making I started making YouTube videos around that time too it was like really early YouTube days like 2008 before it was so, mainstream it's weird because everyone's like YouTube these days. Everyone's making money on YouTube. People are like literally YouTubers. And when I was doing it, it was literally like, you can upload your video on this website and people will start and probably like start commenting and like see your videos. And it was like weird, cool. Like, why would you do that though? <laughs> like people are literally like, that's weird. Why? And I was like, I don't know. I like making videos. I like, I like it. I'm like, I'm going to put up weird lip sync videos. Like, I think the only people really killing it at the time are like Smosh. And I was like, oh. I love Smosh. Like, I want to be Smosh. Like, I was obsessed. And I was like, I want to do skits. And I'm like, this is fun. And I started like learning to edit and like all that. Meanwhile, like acting classes. And then I was like, you know what? I'm allergic to grass and pollen and baseball sucks because it's springtime every year. So I'm going to quit baseball, do acting. And then that's kind of like when I was 13. So that just... Every, everything kind of worked out because it's like music and YouTube was like an easy thing to combine yeah. and then uh, acting and making videos like I just loved all that like I fell in love with it so ever since then I've just been like full-on like let's make stuff let's act let's be creative oh my god that's awesome so I have to ask just because I, I know a lot of Canadians like hockey did you ever play hockey I'm the the worst Canadian. My nana, God rest her soul, loved loved hockey. So, and she's from Canada, um, some tiny little island, Queen something. Oh, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not Queen. It's probably it's probably in Quebec. Anyway, so I had to ask. So that one's for you, Nana. I know. Just <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, like, I mean, growing up, like everyone was into hockey. Well, I just had like a fourteen year old voice crack. Everyone was into hockey growing up, and I wasn't. Like, I was like. Yeah. I was never really into sports. I don't know. I liked playing baseball and I liked playing sports like for fun. But as soon as it got really competitive, I was kind of like, this is not for me. Like all the sports I've done were like the only team sport was baseball. And then I did a lot of snowboarding and I still snowboard. And I did, um, I played some golf because I had a lot of golf courses around. Yeah, it makes sense in that small. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. That's yeah. Awesome. That's about so it. So you just got the acting bug and the creative bug. Yeah, which is crazy because like no one in my school or my small like hometown like was really doing it. So I was known as the kid that's like a YouTube kid or like I was known as the kid that's like the actor kid. So like it was that kid. <laughs> yeah, like everyone was like, oh, that's Harrison. He's an actor. He's going to be famous or like, oh, that's Harrison. He's he does weird YouTube videos and they're hilarious. Like whatever it was that's what it was yeah. um and I enlisted anybody who wanted to help me with videos to like help oh fun my... um, are, are your videos still up a lot of them are yeah really oh man I'm gonna I do some digging quite later because when I was look I would be so like canceled if like I left up some of the stuff I was doing when I was 14 I'm like looking at what's going on right now and I'm like yeah well 10 12 years ago I said or did really dumb stuff because I was 14 years old yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah see craziest experience of online bullying I've ever had and I'm like talking like when I was like doing YouTube at 12 13 14 years old there were so many haters at the time like people telling me to like I don't know just crazy stuff like I, can't, I don't even want to say it on 
online like it's horrible like but yeah. you know the stuff that's said online it's like crazy yeah. it's like go kill yourself you're yeah. this you're that you're a horrible person why do you do this like you must be this you must be that like yeah. kill yourself god doesn't love you whatever it is right like oh my god like, yeah just it's... crazy stuff but when i was like i don't know something about it when i was like 12 or 13 it just like didn't bug me i was just like whatever like block delete like there's mm -hmm. obviously a, i have a thousand people that love my videos so it's like it didn't really matter to me and then my parents maybe just helped me with that and told me like block those people or like don't worry about it kind of thing yeah. and yeah half the time it's like a username like i love kirby 0302 and it's like i don't even know you like why do i care what you're saying um so with i just had that outlook so i guess it didn't really ever get to me but then like this last week was like nuts some TikTok was like blowing up and like it was getting me a bunch of new fans from my first acting role, which was Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I like started the cheese touch in it. And like all these TikTok kids were like finding me through this random TikTok and like messaging me. And I got added in this group. They're all like 13 what? and 14. And I got added in this group, like this group chat, and they just start going off on me like what? saying the most inappropriate stuff that I would never even say like now and I'm 24 and I'm like what is going on like I'm gonna get like this is bad like I, I was replying at the beginning like haha you guys are funny right yeah, yeah. and it just kept going and getting oh, more and more, like crazy and I'm like I need to like leave this chat like I need to get out of here real anything fast. I say or do like I'm trying to like oh, be nice yeah. be really friendly and anything I say or do they're just taking it way too far and I'm like this is really uncomfortable. Like, like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do now. Like, oh, you know, we're, we're in our twenties and if someone that is like 13 and they're commenting, like God knows what they're going to do with like the message you reply or whatever. And then it blows up and then it's like, what is this? Or what did I respond to? And you, they, it just, things just blow out of proportion. So we're super. sure like literally scary. on Twitter is Wayfair. I don't know if you know this. No. You know the company Wayfair? Like the yeah, furniture. Yeah, Wayfair. It's just when I, that one. <laughs> There's like some crazy conspiracy today that's like bigger than Pizzagate now, which is like Wayfair is sex trafficking children. What? Because they're like, oh, why is your cabinets $10,000? And they're named after like missing children names. Like there's all these weird like connects. And I'm like... What? no way if i'm if i say this in this podcast and i'm wrong this would be like insane but like i am almost like i can almost guarantee wayfair is not in the sex trafficking business yeah. like yeah it makes no sense like it's no. just crazy crazy although yeah. 2020 has proven us like yeah 2020 anywhere. like all bets are off nothing nothing matters you can't it's just like i don't know I, you if you say something wrong like you can't you can't say anything because it's wrong and then it, it, whatever don't even get me started on that whole pinata but anyway so diary of a wimpy kid i love that movie i saw it forever and ever and ever and ever ago i might have to watch it again was that like your first role literally my first acting job i ever booked was in the first diary of a wimpy kid movie i was like 13 or 14 because it shot in vancouver yeah, and yeah. i remember auditioning for the lead and I was like, at the time, I was like a big fan of the book. So it was like an incredible yeah. audition to even get. And um, I was auditioning for the lead, had a callback, auditioned for like the weird friend, Fragley, had a callback. And then they just, for some reason, didn't want to cast me in either of those roles. I mean, they all went American, which was kind of uh, like looking back, it's kind of like, oh, of course. But like, I don't know. I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but. Rude. Um, Canadian casting was rooting for me hard, um, which was awesome. And then I ended up just auditioning for like three or four other roles. And they basically were like, we're going to get you in this movie, like one way or another. And I oh ended my up God. the role of the cheese touch kid. And I was like, sick. Like that's iconic as heck in the book. And they ended up making it a big kind of like scene in the first movie. And I think it's like a really memorable part, which was awesome. Like I remember being so scared that they were going to cut my part. No. It was like, like if they cut it it would have been like so easy to cut like it's like a one minute thing right yeah yeah oh my god that so was awesome, his awesome experience though yeah has the cheese touch followed you everywhere or is it like that's just cast until recently for me it was like 
past, but I mean, it still is like it's interesting because it's like not the I don't know, it's not like the biggest role I've done. Like people know me from other things, but they still there's still a large like niche fan group <laughs> of Diary Wimpy Kid and the Cheese Touch Kid. Like that that yeah. role I think will never leave. It's kind of like I don't know. I don't know if it's, it's like, iconic. I hope it's not the biggest thing I ever do, but like it, won't it has be. it's still relevant somehow. Oh my god. Like, so what I has been there's still like I still get royalty checks. So I'm like that's the only thing I get checks hey, from. That's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. I I'm mean like, not wow. not that you're not getting other checks, but like you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. I mean, when you're not working, like yeah, when the, when there's a pandemic, it comes in handy. <laughs> yeah, they're tiny. It, it'll pay for my coffee, maybe. There you go. There you go. But like, sick. like it's just funny that that role is like the one that's like, it's always gonna like stick around somehow. Like, I'll in twenty years, I'll get a royalty check for like a hundred dollars from it, and I'll be like, wow. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Oh my god. So out of all the roles you've done, what do you think your favorites? Mm. You have one? There's that loaded question. I mean, no, it's not a loaded question. I like all like I like all the roles I've played. That would be such a lie, but like most <laughs> of the roles I've played like were super fun and I like them for different reasons. Like I loved Die of a Wimpy Kid because it was like this huge blockbuster movie. And it was my first role. So that experience was like incredible. I'll never forget it because it's like the first acting job you book. And it was like ended up being like such a cool little small role that ends up being like memorable for so many people. So I thought that was like pretty cool. And then, yeah, and the cast was super nice on Diary of a Wimpy Kid. So like that was cool. Like as a first experience, it was like prime. Like it was like, it just felt yeah. good. I was like, cool. I love this. Like I'm in. Um <laughs> I'm not gonna. I mean, play. dang. <laughs> I'm not giving up, dang it. I mean, you could have had a. Ho- I mean, some people might have a horrible experience the first time acting, like on a little short film or something, and that would suck, right? So, yeah, I'm just happy I had a really good experience the first time, like booking a role and stuff. So that was so fun. And then after that, I ended up booking. What did I do after that? Oh, it's so funny because I did a role after that, and it was so depressing because I met like one of my childhood heroes, and he was like not friendly at all. and the role was like really small and it was just like a whatever experience like it was just like in and out you know Uh, they say never meet your heroes yeah 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 yeah. sometimes (laughs) totally ruins it other times it's great Great. so that was like one of those times that was kind of weird like I was like oh like okay like you have one side where it's amazing and one side that's like that was not a cool thing but yeah other than that like finding stuff out was like this science show I hosted for three seasons and even though it was super low budget and I didn't get paid that much like I really enjoyed doing the show because even though it was like a lot of hard work I got to experience so many things that I would have never experienced still in my life like Mm -hmm. but because of that show I got to do just so much like sit in a helicopter like search and rescue helicopter or like I got to drive a Ferrari I got to like there's so many things like I hung out with kangaroos on set like oh like I'm trying to think of other things like I don't know just so so many like because it's an educational science yeah. show they just planned so many cool things like I got to travel Canada and, and do different things and meet so many different like literal experts in their field and I'm like cool at the time when I booked that show I did not like science like I was not a science kid like I was like math and arts and then this show like flipped like flipped it for me. Yeah. And I, oh, science is cool. Science and cool. <laughs> I ended up not enjoying. So it was like an interesting like thing in my life for that to like open up a door of like new experiences for me, I guess. I'm trying to think mm-hmm. of like there's just so many things on that show I did that were like so cool. Yeah. Like it seems it. I gotta watch yeah. this show. <laughs> I did like fifty episodes or something nice. and they were all like different obviously like educational like I yeah traveling for episodes and stuff like I just loved it like that was awesome um sometimes it was stuff that I didn't like though like I don't know I'm not a huge fan of like spiders and like there's an episode on poop and we literally like we're digging with scalpels through like literal shit (laughs) 
<laughs> like bear. Oh, was it your was it your own shit or was it yeah, like bear? Oh. <laughs> I was like, like okay, bear. But it's like Dumb so that question. wasn't fine. Like sometimes it's like oh you're standing in in Quebec in the middle of a field in thirty degrees Celsius summer, uh, <laughs> which is like ninety. So you're like sitting in the middle of a field for like four hours waiting for like a falcon to return because we were like with a falcon expert and it's like that wasn't super fun. But like the falcon <laughs> was <we> dope. <laughs> waiting for it was not dope. Like the director's like, yeah, I want to get the shot. I want to get the shot. Da, da, da. And I'm, I'm sitting there like, I want to leave. I want to not be here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, like that, those, there's moments where it's like, I don't want to do that. But it's like, whatever. Like, I think yeah. the good outweighs the bad. Like, that's the honest truth. And like, yeah, it was just such a cool experience overall. And then I got to book like some assembly where I got to meet Sydney and Colton and like some of my best friends in the world. And like, that was one of my dreams is like to do a kid's show like that. And like, yeah, that was just incredible. Like I love comedy stuff always have. And like being able to do that and like check that one off my bucket list mm -hmm. to say. And like, yeah, honestly those like, yeah, I'll never forget like the three years I shot some assembly. Cause like, Bowie was such a fun character to play and like it was super fun and the crew was super nice and like I got to meet yeah like I said I got to meet my best friends and like yeah, yeah. that's changing right when you can do that kind of stuff so exactly what, what an interesting yeah, we're talking today because of that yeah because because of all this and because of some assembly required so thanks uh was it YTV or why why yeah, something TV. Wow, I learned something. As far as like the entertainment industry as a whole, do you, I just like, huh, <laughs> what the heck was it all? Um, as, a you, whole. as a whole. Um, do you think that there's like a standard that everyone has to maintain? I mean, I know for me as a girl and like modeling and like acting, like it's like, you gotta be tiny, you gotta be pretty and you gotta have boobs and a butt, but like not too much. Do you think? But like you, not too much. But like not aggressively. As a guy, what is it like? That's yeah. That's an interesting topic. I've always thought about it. Like, I think we're getting to a point where it doesn't matter, and like, I feel like both are on a different like trajectory. If you have like two graphs. Obviously, if you're listening to this on the podcast, I can't show you a graph. But, like, if there's, like, the group of people that don't fit the perfect image and then, like, the group of people that are just, like, average, quote-unquote average or, like, di or d unique or not in this perfect image category, they're, like, both moving towards, like, acceptable, I guess. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, I don't think anybody e ever fits a perfect image. And I think that's what we're starting to realize, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. I don't know. As a guy, I like your graph. Like, as a guy, it's like, oh, abs, muscular. You have to be five, eight, or six foot minimum. And you have to work out and be a jock and be like masculine. And I'm like, I'm tiny like I'm not gonna ever be that yeah. in my life like impossible and I mean I could go get buff I guess but like I don't want to work out all the time and I don't I'm not I'm five foot five and a bit and I lie and say I'm five six like depending yeah. on the situation so it's like when I was in high school I was even like now it's like getting to a point where it's like oh that's fine like you're just a short man mm -hmm. like you're just like tom cruise or something whatever yeah but, you're tom cruise like cool yeah i'm tom cruise and i'm like okay cool like great like i can i figured it out and like i don't need to be that be upset, so it's like yeah, whatever yeah. but when i was like in middle school and even high school like i didn't hit my growth <laughs> spurt until like late late like even after high school like I was like 18 so I was like tiny in high school yeah. like people thought I was like literally like 10 years old and I was like 15 you know like if you didn't talk to me you'd be like oh this kid is literally 10 like he's, <laughs> he's oh my God. tall and skinny scrawny and like his voice has not hit puberty yet so it hasn't dropped and like 
You know what I mean? It's just like, and I was like, hey guys, I'm Harrison. Like, nah, 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 nah. And like, like a thousand times too much energy compared to anyone else. So they're like, yeah, you're 10 years old. And I'm like, I'm 16. <laughs> Like, oh, oh my god so like for sure it's like there's times where like you get made fun of or like people like say weird comments and stuff and like they expect you to especially like acting like I don't know maybe they expect you to be a certain way but for me I was like I just made it work like I was like this is funny and I'm just gonna make it work and like I don't know people accepted me for it because I accepted me for it yeah and you're pretty strong for doing that because I'm sure it wasn't always as easy to be as confident as you are yeah, it was, I don't know, like. Or were you just always confident? Like, I, yeah, I don't know why, but I just am. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I was, like, born with it or or what. Like, I just didn't, like, things never really affected me that bad. Like, when people said bad things, I was like, I'm just going to do me and I'm going to make it happen. Like, what I want to do, I'm going to make happen. So, like, I don't know. Like, I remember teachers coming to me in middle school even and being like, hey, like, Harrison, like, you seem to not let any bullying affect you. Like, do people make comments to you? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, it doesn't really affect you, does it? And I'm like, no, like, I'm fine. And they're like, well, there's this other kid that's, like, going through a hard time with it. Like, do you mind talking to him or her? And uh -huh. I'm like, yeah. And, like, I don't know what to say, though. I'm like, you just, like, that's just my thing about, like, bullying. I'm like, I don't understand it. Like, yeah. Like, I, like, bullying's a horrible thing, but it's always going to exist. We're not going to get rid of it as a human race. Like, we're not going to get rid of war as a human race. We're not going to get rid of, like, bad people as a human race. Like, it's impossible. Like, yeah. you can put people in jail. You can have the death sentence. You can, like, cancel culture all you want. Like, people that you don't agree with. But, like, it's not going to get rid... It's not going to get rid of it. It's not going to get rid of it. So, like... It's a mindset thing, in my opinion. Like, you really have to, like, understand and, like, change your mindset if your mindset isn't already, like, confident or, like, that's fine. Like, you just have to change your mindset that, like, not everyone's going to like you and some people are just shitty people. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. Some people just suck at the end of the day. Like, but... I was having this conversation even with my girlfriend and I'm like, I just, like... I don't care what people think about me. Uh -huh. Like you just have to do what you want to do and do what's right in the world and like pick your morals and stick to them or change them. If you know, like yeah. I think you should be able to change your morals and like, yeah, not be held accountable for like who you are now because you can change and be different or you can like become a better person if you are a bad person and like, good and bad is subjective as well right so it's like everything know. is subjective like, really deep, this is like a really deep conversation that yeah. could be like an entire podcast episode maybe like maybe it'll be half of this one I part two yeah hey. yeah like i don't know like it's it's there's no easy answer for it because it's a huge gray area in life like in the world and it always will be like there will not be like black and white like i don't know like and like like, like, I don't know, like, what's it like Harvey Weinstein versus Aziz Ansari? Like, uh -huh. they're put in the same category, but they're two very different things. Yeah. At one point, they were put in the same category. I think that, like, if Harvey Weinstein was the beginning of that whole, like, this is really wrong, you should not do this, you're a horrible person if you do this, I agree. As a Harrison, I'm saying I agree with that. Like, Harvey Weinstein, what he did, horrible, bullshit that's terrible. Like you're a bad person. What as these and sorry. And then the end of that whole thing, like that whole like movement or whatever, or like realization in the world was like, as these and sorry, when everyone's like, as these and sorry, is a horrible person. And it's like, everyone was like, wait a second, hold up. Not really. <laughs> like, as these and sorry, yeah. like, I don't know. That was like, I don't know. Like that's the line right there. Right. Like, he's fine. Anything of anything worse than that is, like, there's levels of, like, how bad it is, right? Yeah. 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 With, like, so many... I'm just thinking of, like, so many names. It's just, like, yeah, there is levels. And it's, like, once you cross that one line, it's, like, yikes. Every case is unique and every person is unique and every, like... Yeah. There's no 
like two things the same when it comes to people like and actions of people because it's different yeah i have weird yeah. like i might have even like weird opinions on like stuff like that like not specifically that but like i don't know like self defense stuff is pretty interesting to me like just the laws that exist are interesting and people right now are getting so hung up in what the law says sometimes and i'm like you realize laws can change mm -hmm. and like laws all laws are made to be broken i was super interested in law like when i was like in like younger i was like i'm gonna be a pro baseball player or a lawyer so like law has always been like interesting to me and i'm like law is something i'm realizing that it's like always evolving like it changes it's not law yeah. is never black or white like the laws exist so that we can like measure what's good and what's bad and like right now we're seeing laws change in america and canada and the world with the black lives matter protests and like mm -hmm. That's awesome. Like, I yeah. why hasn't that been done 50 years ago? You know what I mean? God, like, I, know. I don't know. It's just, but I'm like, great. Like, see, here's something that we can change. And like, this is a law that these are laws. There's multiple ones that should be changed that were written like 200 years ago. And people are still looking at it like it matters. And it's the same relevancy of today. Definitely not. Yeah. It's, just, it needs I'm to change. For president, so. Yeah. Hey, you want to run? <laughs> Come, come to move to America and then become president. I don't know if that's uh, probably might. You know what? Maybe that law will change because don't you have to be from the states to like run mm. for president? Yeah, I read that. It's like you have to be. That one kind of makes sense to me, but I'm like, you yeah. have to be a citizen of the states for something like 30 years if you're not already born. Oh, something well, like that. I'll get started. I'm like that makes sense. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Oh, but wow. I don't know. I don't know if politics is for me. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I think you got like, I mean, I love your opinions. I think they're great. I think you're yeah. just so talented and creative. I think the world needs more use to bring to bring those concepts of law and blah, 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 blah into your art. Yeah, like, I think so. <laughs> I think eventually, like, I'll figure that out. I just like, as a straight white male, I just like truly believe like right now is just like not my time to be like shouting my opinions out there. Like, yeah, maybe some of my opinions are definitely like right and matter. But like, I don't know what other people support. Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm the same <laughs> way. Hey, that's that's why we're blatantly honest on this show, and we say, like, you know, if I'm being honest right now, I'm just gonna shut up. I think that's like what a lot of like people need to just do. Not even just straight white males, but like just people in general, like just shut up and just stop. Like people, everyone has opinions, and I'm like, as a very opinionated person, it's hard for me to say shut up. But honestly, that would be the funniest end to like the episode ever is just shut up and then it just silent golden. Well, like even I, I mean that concept is like a good one to hold on to for for like the bullying so, thing too or like yeah. body image. It's like just just shut up. <laughs> I'm gonna make a shirt. Just shut up, and that's gonna be the thing. It'll be what's Sm Smosh's like intro like way back. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we wrap it around at the beginning of the podcast. Oh uh, my god! Wow, I should be a writer. Uh, you should be. Yeah, news. It, you, what don't you do? It's like YouTube, acting, directing, musician. That's it. Oh, that's it. Okay, then, writer's not in there. But, but I'm trying. I'm gonna. I'm th debating writing a book. Wait, you should write a book. I, I think, think I'm gonna write a book this year. I'm going to Hawaii. I think for three months, and I'm gonna write a book. Oh my god, Hawaii will be the best place ever to write a book and just zen. Yeah. And, do yeah. you know? Yeah, I was gonna say, do you know what part? But we don't want any crazy thirteen-year-old stalkers following you to Hawaii. And girlfriend, want to like that? Uh, if you want to stalk me, I'm going to Waikiki. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be over there. <laughs> I'm gonna be real close to like Al Moana. I've never been to Hawaii, so like I don't I've know. never been either. I'm excited. So. I've never been. Oh my god, I think that's so funny. Like Hawaii, what made you pick Hawaii? We were just like Hawaii. Uh, I was like, where are the lowest COVID cases in the United States? And it was Hawaii. Yeah, definitely don't come to Florida right now. No. So I picked that. Like I picked yeah. it strictly based on I need to be in the United States and I don't want coronavirus. So. What about Alaska? Oh, a lot. Yeah, but I don't want to go to Alaska. Rip X canceled Alaska. Uh uh. Yeah. <laughs> Alaska's a weird place to me. I'm like, how is that even a part of the States? Like, if you look at a map, you're like, what? Yeah, it doesn't really make how any sense. How did you guys get that? What happened, dear? What happened? How did you guys get that?
Uh, I, no, I guess sense. Canada didn't if want guys, it, I guess. If, if you guys can get Alaska, Canada should be able to get or, uh, Washington, Oregon, and California. Yeah, that's fair. That's, that's fair. my pitch. <laughs> that's your pitch. Bring it up. Next uh, meeting, you say, hey, I got an idea. I want New um, Canada. I want to combine those three states into New Canada. Oh, my God. You guys have New Mexico. We're going to steal a part of the states and make it New Canada. <laughs> Honestly, why not? I mean, at the rate everything's going, just, like, free for all. 2020, this is it. But, well, you are just, so where can people, like, look at you next? Where can they find you? What are you doing? Yo. <laughs> Yo, follow my at. Well, everyone follow me. I got a link tree uh, so you can find all my links. Uh, I just found out about link tree. What is what? Link, link tree. tree. I thought you were trying I'm to say LinkedIn, it. but you called it like link tree. No, there's a link tree. It's like a website that has all your links on it. So it's like you put that in your Instagram bio. It's like a social, it's like a social media. It's like a marketing thing right now. I don't know. Link tree. I'm going to get one. Get on that. You need that. Um, no, but. Basically, it's my name on all social media, uh, Harrison Hood, H-A-R-R-I-S-O-N-H-O-U-D-E, because it's French-Canadian, um, even though I don't speak French. <laughs> no, what? See, you you could have been like, I am fluent in French. I'd be like, oh, okay. Uh, je m'appelle Harrison Hood. <laughs> J'aime les fromages. Well, Harrison Hood. Um, I always have our guests take us out of the episode. Yeah, uh, just remember to sometimes just to shut up. <laughs> and then you will be able to be bold, be you, be blatantly honest. <laughs> yeah. is, there, is there one more, right? No, you got it. Oh, You want to you add, add your own? Let me say it one more time. And keep both of them in here, though, so everyone knows that I made a mistake. Because I kind of went up. As an actor, I'm like, I went up on the end of that. Like, this sounds weird. Be bold, be you, and be blatantly honest.